Challenger's Lost Lessons. Over 20 years have passed since the loss of the Challenger crew on January 28, 1986. That mission, had it been completed, would have brought teacher in space Krista McAuliffe science lessons to children around the world through two live and six filmed lessons to be conducted in space. The lessons, prepared for the nation and the world's children, were never performed. In 2007, the space shuttle mission STS-118 launched with Krista McAuliffe's backup teacher in space candidate Barbara Morgan. Two downlinks from space were conducted with students, including one with the Challenger Center for Space Science Education, an educational nonprofit organization formed by the surviving families of the crew to introduce space science through simulation to students around the world. Fifty centers in 30 states and four countries now carry on that mission. Back in the 1980s, a NASA educational specialist, Bob Mayfield, wrote descriptions of the six planned activities for Krista McAuliffe in space, focusing on the science and engineering performed in the conception and planning of the lessons, and describing related Earth-based exercises. Mock-up planning practices of the six activities and the two live lessons and zero-gravity demonstrations on video by Krista were collected and are now made available to help teachers understand and to teach Krista's lessons. They are available on the Challenger Center for Space Science Education website at www.challenger.org. All six experiments include a materials list set up and step-by-step -step instructions for teachers to use in the classroom with students. Using these activities, teachers can replicate that which Krista was not able to share from orbit. Krista's wonderful teaching gift and her spirit are captured on the videos, and her remarks and actions in training accomplish most of her lesson plans. Her often quoted remark, I touch the future I teach, is validated through the distribution of the materials by Challenger Center, the organization formed to carry on the educational mission of the crew. Students experiencing the lost lessons will be the future touched by Krista's teaching gift. The videos we have, though performed on Earth and in NASA's zero-g aircraft rather than on orbit, include Krista's remarks for the six experiments. The Teacher in Space project involved six activities which would be filmed and photographed during the mission and two live lessons. The six activities were planned to be conducted on the topics of hydroponics, magnetism, Newton's laws, effervescence, chromatography, and simple machines. The goal of the hydroponics activity was to demonstrate a possible procedure that might be used on the space station and in future space endeavors to provide nutrient requirements for plants in a closed environment in microgravity. The objective was to demonstrate the processes related to growing plants in microgravity. The goal of the magnetism activity was to understand the role of magnetic lines of force in the space environment. The objectives were to photograph and observe demonstrations of magnetism in space and to photograph and observe lines of magnetic force in three dimensions in a microgravity environment. A compass and bar magnet procured from a teacher supply store were selected to demonstrate that magnetism certainly is a force in microgravity. The goal of the Newton's Laws activity was to demonstrate the fundamental laws of motion during weightlessness. The objectives were to show the principle of inertia in an orbiting spacecraft and show the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration, and to show the action-reaction of two different masses colliding. The goal of the effervescence activity was to understand why products may or may not effervesce in a microgravity environment. The objective was to show the action of bubbles produced in a microgravity environment and to observe the lack of buoyancy. The activity originally called for a clear plastic container open on top and an effervescent tablet and a water gun. The teacher would have placed the tablet in the container and used the water gun to add water. Well, this scenario presented several concerns to the safety board and engineers. Though one of the Skylab crew demonstrated that water could be squirted into an open container using their food rehydration water gun, they had good control of the forces acting on the water. But the release of liquids into the cabin could pose a threat to electronic systems. A standard drink container was unsuitable due to the CO2 pressure causing water to leak, but finally a flight approved bottle was found that could maintain a proper seal. The objectives of the chromatography activity were to demonstrate chromatographic separation of pigments and capillary action in microgravity. 
Tests with various inks, papers, and quantities of water promise this to be an easily duplicated demonstration for the classroom. Place a spot of ink on a piece of paper, hang the paper on the bulletin board, add a drop of water, and observe while the water dissolves the ink. The water moves against gravity due to capillary action carrying the components of the ink with it. The objective of the last activity, Simple Machines, was for students to understand similarities and differences between the use of simple machines in space and Earth environments. The question posed was, would certain simple machines have been developed by people who always lived in microgravity? Or stated another way, what are the applications in space for simple machines like the wheel and axle, lever, inclined plane, wedge, and the pulley? Besides the six lost science lessons scheduled for filming aboard Challenger, two televised live lessons were planned for the mission. The time for each was 15 minutes, and they were to be aired on the public broadcasting network. The first, titled The Ultimate Field Trip, required no special hardware. The lesson was based on a quote by teacher in space Krista McAuliffe, who described her opportunity to go into space as the ultimate field trip. The objectives were to observe the major areas of the space shuttle and describe their function, to list and describe the major kinds of activities crew members perform aboard the space shuttle, and to compare and contrast daily activities in microgravity with those on Earth. The lesson would have had Krista begin in the flight deck area of the Challenger, where she would introduce the commander and pilot and point out the shuttle controls, computers, and payload bay. Arriving in the mid-deck, she would show viewers the kinds of equipment and processes which help human beings live comfortably and safely in the microgravity environment of the space shuttle. The goals of the second lesson, where we've been, where we're going, why, were to better understand why mankind utilizes and explores space. The objectives were to demonstrate the advantages of manufacturing and microgravity, highlight technological advancements that evolved from the space program, and to project mankind's future in space. In the practice video, Krista is cheerful, dedicated, and fully in command of what was expected of her. This she did despite knowing that millions of students, young and old, would be attending her class. As the lesson from space began, Krista referred to the models of the Wright brothers' plane and the proposed NASA space station to help viewers recall that only 82 years separated that early flight from today's life in space. Krista would discuss the reasons we are living and working in space, covering astronomy, Earth observations, experiments on board the shuttle, satellites on board the mission, materials processing, and technological advances. While more than a score of years have passed, Krista's often quoted remark is once more validated through this project, I Touch the Future I Teach. Students experiencing the lost lessons will fulfill Krista's prophetic words. They are the future touched by Krista's teaching gift. May all who participate in these lessons know the same warmth and admiration for Krista as those who selected her as NASA's first teacher in space and those who worked with her to prepare for her mission. Krista's crew included Francis R. Dick Scobie, Commander, Michael J. Smith, Pilot, Ron McNair, Mission Specialist, Ellison Onizuka, Mission Specialist, Judy Resnick, Mission Specialist, Gregory Jarvis, Payload Specialist, and Krista McAuliffe, Teacher in Space. This is Rita Carl, Director of Educational Programs at Challenger Center for Space Science Education, signing off.